So one thing that I get asked about quite a bit is my own training. And it's something that, to be honest, I don't really talk about that much. There's only one person on the planet who really knows what my training is all about. Newsflash, that's me. And usually I'm trying to give you the tools so you can get better on your journey. I'm not usually talking about my own training most of the time. However, it is something that I get asked about quite a bit, and I'm gonna to try to frame this in a way that can be as informative and useful as possible for you. Because it's not about me, it's about you and how this could help you on your journey. So this isn't just gonna be sets, reps, weights, this is gonna be telling you why exactly I'm choosing these exercises, how I'm executing them, maybe some tips, tricks, tweaks, twerks, hacks, whatever's, fixes to help you get the most out of these movements. Start out with pull downs, really just trying to dig into the lats, drive those elbows down in front, in front, just keep them forward, keep the tension on the lats. That is one of my favorite latissimus dorsi movements. I'm also doing spoto presses here. This might look like it's a bounced bench press. It's not actually touching my chest. I just have really long arms and this is a good way to keep tension on the chest and to keep positioning. I would always lose tension in that bottom position. And so if you're struggling with the shoulders coming out of position or with the bar drifting forward too much, that's a great movement. And I'm alternating, you'll notice here, I'm alternating pull downs and the Spoto Larson presses. And this is because they're working different muscles and I try to be as time efficient as possible in my training. With lower body, I don't think supersets are really that great, but for up, upper body, absolutely the way to go. Again, I'm trying to dig into these lats, drive those elbows forward, keep the tension on the lats and try to keep uh, it less of a horizontal pull and more of a vertical pull. Back to Spoto presses, I'm trying to get around eight to 10 reps on these. My personal best with this weight is 11, so this is a pretty good effort. And I was turned on to these by a few people, uh, particularly Bald Omni Man. And this is a great way to take the legs out of it and keep any kind of oomph out of the movement as well. So you can see I'm staying tight, not quite touching the chest, close to it, it's not a half rep, you're still you know, getting a good range of motion, but I find that this is excellent for chest development and is great for positioning. You let the elbows come forward as well. You know, it's not dumping the bar forward, and this is gonna be a really good movement to just clean up your technique. And for a long time, my bench press technique was absolutely horrible, bouncing the bar. Moving on to Helms rows. One of my favorite rowing variations, this has quickly become easily my top three because it's supporting the chest, but not to such a degree that you are losing tightness. So most of your weight is still on your feet. You're just touching that chest to keep you in position and to keep the movement fairly strict. And I take these well beyond failure. I'm going pretty light still because of the QL issue. Uh, so I'm in the sort of 15 to 20-ish rep range. I think anywhere from 10 to 20 is absolutely money for this exercise. And you can see I'm driving the elbows back. You drive the elbows back, it's more lats. If you row straight up, it's a little bit more traps, rhomboids. And if you flare the elbows, it's more rear delt. So you can really tailor this exercise to target whatever you want. Here's a front view. And you can see in the first few reps, my elbows are really driving up high. As you get tired, you're probably not gonna be able to get as much range of motion. This is totally fine. I would say this is one of those movements that you're best off pretty much always going beyond failure or sort of at a minimum to failure. It's most difficult in that contracted position and just due to the strength curve, you're gonna really want to push this movement. It's not like a deadlift or a squat where you really have to be respectful of the weight. Make it your bitch. Really show it who's boss and uh, get the most out of the movement by pushing really, really hard and going beyond failure. Then the next pushing movement was incline dumbbell bench press. I tend to do my alternating sets a little bit more free form. So generally pushing movements take a little bit longer to warm up and therefore they might lag behind the pulling movements. So it's not like I have A and B and they're always the same A and the same B. 
they are sort of mixed in, and as long as I'm alternating between them, it doesn't exactly matter which exercise I am doing. Great movement for the upper chest. Don't listen to people who say this is not upper chest. That doesn't even make any sense. You know, we've all been told that inclined presses are for the upper chest. Okay, quick correction on my part. If your uh, elbows are super flared out, your shoulders are elevated, you're in a bad position, you're lowering to the goddamn neck, in that case, maybe it's not the best upper chest movement. But if you're doing it correctly, keeping your chest up, lowering to the middle of the chest around the sternum, keeping your elbows moderately tucked, it's gonna be a damn good upper chest developer, especially when done with dumbbells. Just a quick update there. I guess, you know, that feeling in the upper chest and the soreness the day later is just, you know, in my imagination. And pretty much dumbbells will almost always be more chest compared to barbell because you cannot use the triceps to push out. You have to use the chest to pull in. That was a new PR and uh, I'm pretty happy with that, especially after uh, the Spoto Larson presses. Again, moving on, same helm rows. I did like four sets of these, all beyond failure. It's a movement where you don't really have to worry about stimulus to fatigue. You can just pull and pull and pull and keep pulling until you can't get full range of motion, and then you pull some more. I see a lot of people in the set, they're trying to count their RPE, they're trying to count their RAR in this kind of movement. Just don't. Something like a rear delt raise or a spider curl, where it's most difficult in that contracted position. You just want to go hard. You can do some some isometrics at the end where you pull as high as you can, and then you just keep pulling, and it's not going any higher, but it's stationary and momentary muscular failure, and then you just dig into those lats. I found that to be very, very effective. Moving on to the second set of incline dumbbell bench presses. This is a movement that I've refined a little bit where I'm getting more range of motion, more control, my strength isn't appreciably higher than it was, you know, six months ago, but the technique, the form, the control, the stretch at the bottom, the squeeze at the top are all much better. And so I would say occasionally you might have to reset your form. And so basically what this means is that you can either add weight or get better technique. Now, ideally you would never have technique that breaks down, but that's just how things are sometimes. You know, you add weight a little bit too aggressively and then you clean it up later. And I have found that has been very, very productive for hypertrophy. More Helms rows here. Again, you can do a shitload of these. Uh, machine rows, chest supported rows, like one arm dumbbell rows, anything that takes the lower back out of it, the spinal erectors out of it, you can just do a ton of. And I don't do that much barbell rowing in my program anymore just because I found that my lats and my traps and my rhomboids can take so much more punishment that the lower back just can't keep up. Then moving on to one arm machine rows. I love this movement, it's so fantastic. I'm going really, really light because the QL and the twisting is still not completely a good thing. Um, but I love this movement so much that it's worth doing even if it is strict. Really trying to get a stretch in that bottom position. Unilateral movements are just fantastic when it comes to rows in particular. When it comes to pushes and presses, eh, I'm not as impressed. But for rows, one arm variations, absolutely fantastic. Better stretch at the end, better contraction at the other end, better range of motion, and you really can just get more out of the movement from what I've found. It does take twice as long, you know, that's a downside, but it's absolutely worth it. The next pushing movement, I neglected the warm-ups in this, uh, this overview, but this is the machine chest press. I did this for higher reps, uh, and this is a really, really good movement. Good stretch at the bottom, and then also quite a bit of resistance at the end, which a lot of pushing movements don't have. It's a really, really nice arc. And you know, I, I neglected machines for a really long time because, you know, barbell supremacist for life, that kind of thing. And that was to my detriment. For a long time, my chest development really lagged behind my triceps. And that was because I was ignoring a lot of really, really good tools that I just threw out of my toolbox because it wasn't a barbell or dumbbell. And I think that is a big mistake. You'll see in this workout, 
some barbells, some dumbbells, some machines, some isolation, some compound. And it really does pay, in terms of the gains, to not be dogmatic and not to put any exercises in the list of things you don't do. And if you do put them in that list, make sure to occasionally revisit them because you might have a movement that you hated before and then now you're like, oh, well, I tweaked a little thing and suddenly it's in my top three movements. And this movement, absolutely fantastic. You can really just let that scapula drift forward and get a wicked stretch on those traps, on the rhomboids, lower traps, on the lat, everything, man, freaking fantastic. More chest press. And this really is a great movement. You can see the elbows are tucking as, uh, as I press. This is really just absolutely fantastic for, for lower chest, mid chest, upper chest, that entire chesticle region really just gets hammered. Uh, I prefer roughly 10 to 15 reps for these, but uh, slightly lower is certainly viable as well. And because unlike a lot of barbell or dumbbell movements, it's most challenging at the end, you can really push this close to failure. And you could even potentially go beyond failure if you wanted to. Moving on to standing cable pullovers. This movement is really fantastic. This has been in my program for frickin' ever, and I don't think it's ever gonna leave. One of the best lat movements out there. This past year, I've put roughly three and a half to four inches on my chest. And your chest measurement, it's not just chest. A lot of it is your lats, your teres major, and your traps as well. And I credit a lot of my lat development to this. You can see the underhand is more lats, overhand is a little bit more teres major. You can really just dig into those lats every single rep. It is more of a lat isolation, therefore I often combine it with curls. A lot of pulling movements or rowing movements use the biceps, but standing cable pull pullovers do not. Therefore, I like to uh, alternate them with curls because the bicepticles are quite fresh. These are inclined dumbbell curls, not super inclined, maybe a, a 15 degree tilt back. And these are, are really just amazing. Controlling the eccentric, not fully extending at the bottom, but getting a, a good stretch on the biceps keeping uh, a lot of juicy tension there. And this is one movement that has a very sharp sticking point. So you'll have like an easy rep, ooh, cheeky flex. You'll have an easy rep and then you'll hit failure pretty suddenly sometimes. Back to standing cable pullovers. Oh man, these are just, these are fantastic. I try to tilt my chest up in the, in the contracted position. I think Menno Henselman calls these uh, lat prayers because it looks like, you know, you're praying at an altar or something. And this gets you a fantastic stretch in the top position and then a great contraction in the bottom. You can see that I'm bending my elbows a little bit. This is because the long head of my triceps takes over everything if I don't get a slight arm bend. And so that just helps me keep those out of it. Again, you can stretch at the end of the set, really uh, you know, smack around mTOR, really activate those muscle growth pathways to uh, get the most out of your training. And again, back to incline dumbbell curls. These are one of my favorite biceps exercises, but because it's a stretching movement, I would be careful with these and always control the eccentric. In general, stretching type of movements compared to sort of contraction or pump type of movements, like a spider curl or something, they tend to beat you up more just because you are likely getting more muscle damage. And so I would keep these in your program but maybe more in moderation. Back to standing cable pullovers. Just a fantastic movement, man. Just, and ladies too, freaking fantastic. Everyone could use more lats and just a great option, option for pretty much anyone. And some people might say the bent arm is incorrect technique. For these type of isolation movements, you are going to want to focus on the muscle that you want to develop. Often you can target different areas through different joint angles or just moving in a slightly different way. And I found that just focusing, just sometimes even closing your eyes and focusing on what you want to target can help you get a lot more out of the movement. The back is a complex, complicated area with a lot of different muscles. The scapula is moving, the spine might be moving, uh, the upper arm is going to be moving as well, and therefore tweaking your form slightly can help you get a lot out of the movement. 
Then I moved on to Lou Lateral Raises. Fantastic movement. Alec Ankiri has done uh, at least one video on this. Just a great overall shoulder builder. And it also is good for shoulder health, which I think is important. You might be able to spot a slight muscle imbalance here. This is something I've had for a long time. And I actually have found that this movement is really, really good for that. Just because it forces your scapula to move in a, a very natural way that a lot of movements don't really force it to move in. And I'm cheating these a little bit. The arms are bending a little bit as well. I find that getting one big set where it's cheated, it's beyond a failure, you know, I'm still moving safely and controlling the eccentric is very, very useful for progression on some of these isolation movements. And I think some people, they kind of shoot themselves in the foot because they keep everything super, super strict all the time. And maybe this gets in the way of progression. Yeah, maybe it's safer, but you have to strike that balance between completely safe training and training that is actually going to be effective for hypertrophy. Baby, please. I also mixed these with barbell curls. Now, some people might say, hey, why are barbell curls after incline dumbbell curls? Shouldn't that be the other way around? Well, I'm dealing with a QL issue, so I don't want to be barbell curling a ton of weight. I would rather pre-fatigue with a stricter movement and then keep these with a lighter weight where there's just less force and less weight to brace against. And so how you set up your program might have to be tweaked depending on the issues that are going through. And if you get a template online, or even if you have you know, a program that's customized to yourself, you have to be willing to make adjustments over time. That is absolutely essential. Auto-regulation is crucial. It's critical in my opinion. You have to be able to know when to change things, how much to change things, where to put various exercises, when to swap movements in and out. I get a lot of these questions on Instagram, but it's so goddamn individual. It really is. And this is something that unless a coach is working with you and knows you, there's no hard and fast answer for when to take a movement in or put it out or put it somewhere else or modify things or to change your technique or the rep range or anything like that. A lot of it is art as much as science. So people like to think, oh, well, my training is evidence-based. A lot of the shit we don't have evidence for, and it is an N equals one experiment. Training is your own personal journey, and therefore a lot of the times the science is gonna have inherent limitations just because the study isn't on you, is it? It's on other people. And this can get you headed in the right direction, but it is certainly not the last place to go. So I might have bit off a little bit more than I could chew on this on this set, trying to keep strict form as much as possible, keeping braced. Um, and I probably should have reduced the weight slightly on that set. And then I finished up with some myo reps. I'll link a video up above where I talked about the benefits of myo reps. This is basically where you do one initial set in the sort of 15-ish to 20 rep range, maybe a little bit lower, maybe 12, maybe up to 25. But you basically do a hard set, either near failure or to failure or slightly beyond failure in this case. Uh, and then you rest a little bit and then you do three to five reps again and you rest a little bit, and you just keep going, and you keep hitting failure and attacking failure until you're basically a, a sniveling pile of human meat flesh. And yeah, this was this is going to burn, but for the delts, absolutely fantastically amazing. So yeah, let me know if you have any questions about the workout, why I set things up the way I did, why I was doing certain movements, what other movements might be effective, what rep ranges I used, why I did everything the way I did in this workout. This is generally how I program upper body days for winning that there hypertrophy. So yeah, that's about it. I uh, hope you liked the video. Like, subscribe, share, all the YouTube stuff. Definitely grab a copy of my book that will help you a ton in your fitness journey. And I will see you, hopefully, in the next video. Peace.